tests were carried out. Air pressure projected by pipe sent fine dry sand in a constant spray over the gun being tested. Colonel Latchford himself directed the nozzle in order to be sure of maximum effect and at the same time fair treatment for each gun. From the results of this test, it is apparent that nothing so comprehensive had been carried out before. As can be seen, I had an excellent view of proceedings. Changing magazines under such conditions proved too much for the Thompson. In the light of experience gained in this war, its working tolerances seemed to be too fine for active service conditions. Although this is the more shielded side of the Sten, it got into trouble with the second magazine. getting into even deeper difficulties. With sandstorm effect from right instead of left, the Sten got into hopeless trouble. You can see the vulnerability of the ejector opening, the sand sweeping through the chamber and magazine. It was obvious that the gun would never be able to give satisfactory service under these conditions. And I do not think they are any worse than those being experienced today in the Libyan desert. As a matter of interest, we tried out this 1940 Bergman paratroop submachine gun. The break in the test that you noticed was necessary as we only had one magazine. On reloading, the gun failed owing to rounds becoming jammed in the magazine. Both Sten and Bergman magazines seem to produce a condition when subject to sand or mud of magazine platform and spring jam. to reload the own magazines, but the gun was not cleaned. That stoppage occurred through failure of one round, cause unknown. Now 
they tried the sandstorm from the other side of the Owen. Note the terrific pressure of sand searching every vulnerable opening. motion films show the boat action movement and shell cases being ejected. Falling shell cases, as well as gravity, seem to assist in keeping the ejection opening clear of sand accumulation. The interruption in that burst of fire was to represent a theoretical blockage, and the fire showed us the simplicity of stripping firing mechanism for cleaning. In spite of his not being practiced in the operation, you get an excellent idea of the ease and speed at which this can be carried out. reminds one of conditions at Passchendaele in the last war. It was altogether too much for the exposed and delicate mechanism of the Thompson. This is the gun British paratroops carry. Too bad if they strike these conditions. Reminds one of the jams the Bosch had in the automatic pistols of the Western Front World War I. R-45s worked. This German paratroop model fared little better. These tests show the need of safety clearance and working mechanism. Listen to the grit scraping. That's the Owen. It appears to me to be an equally effective weapon for jungle, desert, or mud warfare. Colonel Latchford certainly gave it a grueling test. I am satisfied that the tests you have seen are the most searching that I could devise with a limited amount of ammunition available.
rifle is still the soldier's main weapon, but in this war, it has been supplemented in increasing quantities by the submachine gun. Australian troops have long since had the US Tommy gun, but even bigger news for them is the arrival of the Owen. We see the inventor showing it to the then Army Minister Spender, who approved the first contract for its manufacture. So today in Australian small arms factories, we find the Owen gun in mass production. Women as well as men are key operatives in this latest development of our arms output. Machinery handled by feminine fingers puts on the finishing touches. With its new detachable hollow stock, the gun is light. It looks almost like a toy. But don't make any mistake, it's deadly in action. The super automatic, the gun that beat all others at its first official test, comes off the assembly line every hour of every day. It's infinitely lighter than the German gun, more easily taken apart, and more deadly. Each gun is tested separately by an expert. Shell cases react the right way to perfect mechanism, and the public is allowed to know that Evelyn Owen's submachine gun, all Australian and beating all comers, is ready for action. Thanks, Mr. Owen. That's what the boys have been waiting for. The finest submachine gun in the world. <laughs>